Just the fact that you're having family devotions is a huge testimony to your kids because everybody's busy. Let's talk about the different roles of mom and dad and maybe even kids and how that plays into our family devotion time. What, and let's start with the, the dads. What is the role of dad when it comes to family worship and family devotions? I think it's real important for dads to take initiative in this, this arena. I mean, everything in our culture today is trying to put dads down. It just is. Yeah. yeah. And, and so I think it's important for, for kids to see that their dad thinks this is important enough that they want to do this. In fact, just the fact that you're having family devotions is a huge testimony to your kids because everybody's busy. Yeah. That, that's across the board. But if kids see that this is so important that you are carving out time to read the Word of God because you feel like this is eternal and this is life-changing stuff, then you are, you are already sending a huge message to your kids that this book is important, mm -hmm. number one. Number two, um, I think the Scriptures teach clearly that it's the parents' responsibility to teach their children. So if I was out of town on a trip, but this was before Skype, uh, my wife would lead family devotions. But when I was home, generally she would defer and I would take the initiative. But um, I don't think there's anywhere where it says the dad has to be the one to do all the teaching. Now, let me, let me tell you a couple of stories about this. And when I say stories, a lot of the stories that I've heard from this is because I used to give away my family worship book for free at conferences. What I would do is I would say, especially to the men, I would say, I will give you this book if you read it within 30 days of this conference. Otherwise, you owe me 50 bucks. Right. <laughs> now, it's 140 pages, so you can read it in two hours. In fact, it's an audio book, and it's free on my website. You can just listen to it if you want. So this is not hard. But dads need a deadline. They need money, and they need uh -huh. somebody to appeal to their testosterone. So anyway, so I did this. <laughs> And as a result, I would send emails out to see whether they did it. And I got so much thoughtful feedback. Men are not meat-eating sports watchers. Men are deep, and they, have a, they know that they have this responsibility, and they want to do well with it. One dad wrote back, and he said, my son, who was in charge of setting the table one night, and in their family, whoever set the table determined who sat where. And most of the time, they would put themselves next to the mom so that they could have her undivided attention for dinner. But when he was three or four years old, that little boy took his dad's Bible, went out and found it, and placed it on his plate. So <laughs> this is where dad sits. And he was telling him, and it's your responsibility to teach us the Bible. I, I just think it's huge. I think it, yeah. it is really big. But I also heard a story from a family and I met this family, and I was surprised. They told me what they did. They're high church. You know what I mean by high church? No. Like Anglican, Episcopal. Okay. You have a lot of liturgy. Mm -hmm. You have a structure, order of worship, et cetera. And they reenact that at home. So oh, they, wow. Okay. Like, so each person has a role in the worship service. So one person picks the first hymn. One person does the beginning prayer. One person reads the scripture. And whoever is responsible, one person teaches. Now, that's usually the mom or the dad. They fluctuate back and forth. And then they have a corporate prayer. They have, but they have A through, if I remember, G. Wow. Each week, they would assign somebody, your A this week, your B, your C. And they knew their responsibility. And I looked at them and I said, do the kids really go for this? And they said, they love it. Wow. And I said, how long does a worship service in your home take? And they say, oh, about 45 minutes but it's the highlight of their day and everybody participates in the worship service. Let me ask one more question. Um, we, we have a few minutes left and I want to shift just a little bit to, um, you know, we've talked about church and um, you know, we, there's, there's corporate worship that we do as a church and then there's family worship. And I want to ask this in light of discipleship, because it's our job as parents, of course, to disciple our kids, to be the ones to teach them. As you said, what about others speaking into the lives of our kids. Um, and, and you and I, we even talked a little bit about Sunday school and how, you know, our kids, your, your kids always sat in church with you. Our kids sit in church with us. But I also think that it's important for other Christians who we trust 
to be able to pour into the hearts of our kids and help disciple them, not disciple them for us, but help speak truth and life into the hearts of our children. Can you speak on that for a minute? I think it is important for children to hear the same thing from somebody else mm -hmm. because we can kind of have the mindset, oh, that's just mom, that's just dad. Right. However, uh, yeah, you pick those people carefully and right. you're, and we were careful where we sent our kids. Mm -hmm. you know, if they were going to go to a youth, uh, you know, youth night or to a Bible study or something like that, yeah, we were pretty careful who we sent them to, but it was really important that they had men and women that love God and loved his word. And they did speak into their life. And our kids had some wonderful mentors. Yeah. Thank yeah. the Lord that God brought along at just the right time, because it is important that they hear from other people. And the Bible says every joint supplies, mm -hmm. you know, we help each other and we all have different giftings and things. So yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. all in favor of that, but you have to be careful nowadays. Yep. Yep. Yeah. You have yeah. to know what they believe <laughs> and yeah. what it is that they're teaching your kids. So, and I asked that because as, as I was growing up, I went to a Christian school um, and I also went to youth group at the church that, um, you know, is kind of the umbrella church over my, my school that I went to. And I had teachers and youth leaders who really did pour um, into my life and they, they discipled me in a big way. I think I am much of who I am today as a believer because of those people and because of, um, you know, the truth that they shared with me and, um, you know, just taking me to scripture. And so, um, so yeah, I just think that that's important. I, I just feel like sometimes homeschool families tend to just be like, okay, just our family, no one else. And they're going to stay with us in church and they're going to stay with us at home. And, and like, we're going to be the ones always to pour into them. And, and while yes, that's important. And that's what God has called us to do. I do think like you said, and so I'm glad you agree with me on that, that it is important for us to carefully vet the people, um, but allow others to pour into our kids as well and into their lives. Yeah. And I'm thinking of, I'm thinking of several men right now with yeah. my boys. I mean, their pictures are up, they're floating in my head as I'm talking about them. Homeschool Insights is sponsored by CTC Math. If you're looking for a great online math program, visit ctcmath.com and try it for free. For more great homeschool inspiration and resources, listen to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast every Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday.